Are we in a Goldilocks scenario right now in the consumer packaged goods industry? I believe we are, and let me explain a little bit in this video. So in my short 34 years alive, in my perspective, this is the best time to be an entrepreneur. If you think about things like low barriers of entry, getting your products to distribution in a few clicks of the mouse, setting up global marketing, having the ability to take a really great creative with smartphone that's in your pocket, throw in all the different feedback loops that's available to entrepreneurs today so they can you know, learn what the market says about their products, be able to make uh, adjustments based on those feedback loops. And the fact that consumers are willing to get outside the establishment and try new products, products that are more personalized to them, creates this opportunity that I have just not ever seen before. To me, this just creates an opportunity that is just too great to pass up. And if we look at just the market in itself, the market never lies. In almost every major CPG category, large brands are losing market share to smaller brands in kind of the same proportion. Some of the reasons why this is happening reinforces some of the reasons why I believe this is the greatest time to be an entrepreneur. First, with direct distribution being more and more important, um, this is you know kind of direct to consumer or similar, this creates this environment where there's just no more gatekeepers. There's not those retail buyers that are telling you what is gonna be winning, what is gonna be losing in the market from their perspective, their bias perspective. There's no more kind of like stringent merchandising and other retail cycles that ultimately stunt the innovation, speed, and the margins available to entrepreneurs. Throw on top of that, marketing costs are kind of switching from them being fixed in the sense that, you know, in CPG, a lot of times you are at the mercy of retailers' promotional schedules, um, having to make sure you have things out a year in advance. Uh, maybe you have some other kind of mass media spends that, that need to have the creative and budget and everything completely handled um, without having much variance change things uh, to a world where marketing costs are becoming variable. You know, with social media, even retailers having their own ad platforms like Amazon, you have the ability to run ads, run creative um, on the fly, see how things are reacting based on the analytics that um, those platforms give you. And based on that, you're able to change things, cut those ad campaigns off early if they're not producing results that you wanted, or if they are producing the results you want, double down, quadruple down on them, and really spend on what's working best. And then finally, this idea that consumers are looking for products that meet their unique needs is and has been a driving force in consumer products. This uh, area, this personalization, uh, looking for your tribe, your unique products that fit into your life and, and how those products and brands represent you within your life is a monumental shift from how things used to be before and this is driving a lot of growth in the long tail of the market. And I know I use the term long tail um, a lot. It's a you know business or economics term. Maybe go over really quick um, what it actually is. If we look at just kind of a graph, the old school Y and X axis graph. If I put on the Y axis, the up and down axis, I put popularity. And if I put um, on the X axis number of products, um, if you look at graph and representative of like CPG or consumer products right now, a lot of the growth a lot of the action is happening on the long tail, so it just kind of slopes down. So this area down here where it kind of is leveling off is what you consider more like the long tail of the market. And this is what you hear sometimes, again, if I say like a death by a thousand cuts, you know, big CPG losing small parts of their market share to a lot of different brands and not even realizing that it's happening because they're used to looking at major competitors, how do we defensively or offensively uh, create strategies or tactics to beat them? This is a little bit different of a war, a little bit different of a battle. So all this happening creates this perfect scenario, this Goldilocks, golden era type of scenario that uh, I believe right now is in consumer packaged goods. S big CPG over the last few years are, are now 100% clear that you know this is happening. They're losing market share to these small uh, smaller startups, more innovative startups. They 
are trying to wrap their heads around it. They're trying to figure out what they need to do. You're seeing them you know, create venture funds. You're seeing them create incubators. Um, they're trying to create new brands or innovate their existing product lines to meet uh, the needs of today's market. But if you look at you know, what's going to make the biggest difference from inside the portfolio of these large CPG brands, that's usually research and development, R&D. And R&D as a percentage of revenue in CPG is only somewhere around about like 3%, which if you look at a more innovative industry like tech, uh, that spend is usually more towards like the 15% of revenue. So they're far off where they need to be spending for to create innovation within four walls of their business. And because consumers are gonna continue to ask for unique products, they're gonna be always kind of looking for personalized products, things are gonna be changing. Big CPG portfolios have had to kind of supplement their own lack of research and development with like market vetted um, acquisitions. They kind of pay for the innovation cycle. They pay for that pipeline. Um, you see it time and time again. These big CPG brands buy a smaller one for a very high multiple because they don't really have any other moves available to them. The R&D strategy has not worked properly within the four walls, so they have to go out and you know, either acquire brands or, or do some other action like I was talking about with venture funding, uh, early stage funding, or with incubators. Now with this like perfect scenario, I think there is kind of a possible misstep with the entrepreneur thinking they're kind of in this perfect uh, situation, this Goldilocks scenario. I want people to remember that with all of these positives, comes a reaction to those positives. So I think a lot of CPG entrepreneurs need to think about like what defines like a big brand now, what defines like in a revenue base, what is considered a big brand and when is it appropriate for them to kind of look to get acquired by another strategic or look for some other options. Because this isn't, you know, 1990 anymore, this isn't 2000 anymore, with the market fragmenting and with there being so much uniqueness, so much dynamic change happening, brand life cycles, product life cycles um, are going to become quicker. And because of that, this idea of like winning and how big brands that are winning is going to become smaller. Because I believe like building this billion dollar CPG company is going to be extremely hard in the future. I don't think it's going to be like we're used to seeing. I don't think you need to peg yourself against some of these mega uh, CPG portfolios that have billion dollar brands. That is not going to happen. But with saying that, still believing that we're in this Goldilocks scenario, I think instead of there being, you know, a few large investments, I think you're going to see a ton of smaller investments as long as the entrepreneur can see it for what it's worth. You know, I believe in idea meritocracy in the sense that creators, people that have uh, the ability to create things the market wants, uh, there's always going to be value for that. There, the market is going to reward you for that. And just because you sell one idea doesn't mean that you don't have another 10 or 20 in your back pocket that's going to work just as well. Cashing you know, several smaller checks that in summation is higher than one big check is kind of the game plan I believe is going to work now. But hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. I put out another video recently that was kind of talking more on uh, the investment side of consumer packaged goods. So I wanted to kind of follow that video up with this one. If you guys do have questions about this video particularly, make sure you guys comment below. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you wanna help support me, make sure you guys hit that thumbs up button on this video. If this is the first time you've been introduced to my videos, would love for you guys to be a part of my community by subscribing to my channel. I upload several videos just like this weekly. And if you guys wanna connect further outside of this platform, I do include all of my social media links down below. I just wanna thank you guys again for your time. Hopefully I gave you some value in return and we'll see you guys on the next video.